everyone back there. Everyone's ready for a drag race? Yeah. Let's do it. It's a family drag race back here. Hey, listen. Well, let's go, let's go against the Turbo S. You better get him, Steve, man. Here he goes. Oh, no, it's going to be really close. Yay! <laughs> right now, there's uh, three car companies here in North America that I think are, are going to make it. Uh, one, obviously, is Tesla. Two, Ford Motor Company. I've already talked about that. And this is the third one. I think these are the new big three. Welcome to Electrified. It's your host, Dylan Loomis. Quick shout out to an updated patron, Mark B. Thank you for choosing to support the channel. First up, just to tie a bow on last week, Elon said that over the next 12 months at Tesla, total headcount will still increase, but the salaried should be fairly flat. So are they going to cut 10% of salaried workers and then over the course of the next 10 months, hire roughly that same amount back? That's kind of how I'm interpreting this tweet, but take it how you will. And if you want a short, accurate response when people ask you about the layoffs at Tesla, you can just say Tesla has been optimizing its operations. And truly, based on the wording, I think it's close to impossible to try to predict any financial changes like OPEX savings or anything like that. However, from a new note, Mark Delaney at Goldman Sachs said, this could result in between $225 million to $1 billion in annual OPEX savings, but he continues, Elon's comments on Twitter of salaried headcount being fairly flat suggest the company's plans to limit cost growth and not reduce OPEX overall, just reducing future growth of operating expenses. Moving on, a study was done of DC fast chargers in California and the results are fairly alarming, concluding that 23% of the stations and chargers analyzed were not in working order. This study was done by Cal Berkeley and I will include this link below to the original paper. They looked at 657 connectors at 181 public stations in the San Francisco Bay Area and found 23% of them were non-functioning. This study was conducted earlier this year between February and March and listen to this, almost 5% of the chargers were considered to have a station design failure because the charging cable couldn't reach the vehicle's charging port. And some of the common issues, failures with the station's payment system, failure to begin charging, error messages displayed on the screen, and blank or unresponsive screens. And how does Tesla's supercharging network stack up? Well, personally, I'd love to see more studies about this, but just one Plug in America study showed that around 3% of Tesla users found broken chargers to be a serious concern. And one of the authors of the study said, poor DC fast charger reliability will either lead to people to not buy an EV or opt for a Tesla. Automotive News shared this interactive map going over deal franchise legislation that is currently under consideration for this year. So if you want to hover over your state to see what's going on, I'll include this link below. I just wanted to highlight that more and more dealerships are taking note of what these automakers are trying to do and the dealerships are confused. One dealership owner said, Tesla's led the direct sales initiative, but it seems like every manufacturer is now wanting to get on board and break off and have EVs be completely separate and we don't quite know what they mean. Over the weekend, Elon said, working on Tesla North American service, goal is to have two thirds of cars receive same day service, no wait. So does this mean same day repairs or same day appointment? We don't yet know, but this is encouraging to see. However, we have to remember a few things. Tesla is growing deliveries anywhere between 50 and we'll say 100% per year. And compare that rate of growth with the rate of growth of Tesla's store and service locations in the mobile fleet. And that's been anywhere between 25 and 40% each year. So roughly speaking, you have Tesla's deliveries growing at about twice the pace of Tesla's ability to service those vehicles. We know service has been a challenge for Tesla as back in 2018, Elon said, we reviewed Tesla service locations in North America and realized we have major gaps in geographic coverage. Sorry for this foolish oversight. Tesla will aim to cover all regions of North America within three to six months. And it's critical to remember when talking about Tesla service, it will always be very region specific. These blanket statements are not going to apply to every different region. And back in 2015, Tesla brought on Kenny Honkamer from F1 and Red Bull to help revolutionize servicing mainstream cars. And back in 2017, Elon said our policy for service loaners is that the service loaner fleet will be the very best version of a Tesla that is available. Now, I know many people out there are laughing because today they can't even get a loaner in general, let alone being the highest line of a Tesla version. However, the point here is just to highlight that 
Tesla service is going to be a challenge as Tesla is literally learning as it goes. And there was no timeline given for this goal. So Elon, well done here, maybe he's learning, but this would be awesome if achieved at some point. Here we have Tesla and Liontown executing their binding offtake agreement. Now this is not in addition to, but just confirming what we talked about a few months back in February when Liontown and Tesla entered into a binding supply agreement. Tesla to purchase 100,000 dry metric tons of lithium spotamine concentrate in the first year, increasing to 150,000 per year in subsequent years. This said to come from the Kathleen Valley Lithium Project in Western Australia. And it says supply is expected to commence in 2024. So what does this actually mean for Tesla? Well, 150,000 dry metric tons, here's what you need. For a 75 kilowatt hour battery, you need around 65 kilograms of lithium carbonate or lithium hydroxide, the final product after actually refining this lithium spotamine. So you typically get one kilogram of lithium carbonate from eight kilograms of lithium spotamine. Or another way, every eight kilograms of the original lithium spotamine will result after refining in one kilogram of the final product that goes into the packs. So doing the math for a 75 kilowatt hour pack, you need that 65 kilograms of lithium carbonate, the final version, multiply that by eight kilograms of the lithium spotamine that you would need would be around 520 kilograms of lithium spotamine needed per pack. And one last step, 150,000 dry metric tons, what this deal is for is equivalent to 150 million kilograms because one metric ton equals 1000 kilograms. So finally, this deal, 150 million kilograms of spotamine divided by 520 kilograms per pack would be enough for about 288,461 battery packs using these assumptions per year starting in those subsequent years. Chuck Cook, an FSD beta tester that I really enjoy, gave some praise to 10.12.2 and in response, Elon said 10.13 will solve your left turns most of the time. And just FYI, Chuck is back uploading videos. Speaking of FSD, this latest software release now expanding to 100,000 cars. 10.13 will smooth out intersection control, especially long lefts and starts to handle roads with no map data at all. Last point is a big deal. Within a few months, FSD should be able to drive to a GPS point with zero map data. And in response to getting more precise drop-off locations, Elon says, yes, car will navigate to a pin location, even if in a complex surface parking lot or hotel entrance. When in covered or underground parking lots, car will have to navigate using only inertial measurement, wheel movement, and vision as GPS signal is no longer available. And FSD in the EU, Elon says, we're close to the point where offering something for EU regulators to review makes sense. So here we have it, Wuwa with an inadvertent find of this new undercover Tesla factory. So what's actually going on here? According to Wuwa, this warehouse is just over one mile away from the Shanghai factory and the supplier parts are stored here and then distributed according to the needs of the production line. And throughout this Shanghai lockout, Tesla has increased its inventory to prepare for future emergency needs. On the building, you can see SAS interior modules. So looking it up, they serve a range of high profile automotive customers, including Tesla. And they say, take Tesla for instance, we're learning how to build with them because they have a completely different approach to the traditional way of doing things. And it's important we adapt our services to suit each client's different needs. And from its LinkedIn page, SAS specializes in the assembly, logistics, and development of modules for motor vehicles and trucks. SAS has also become a competent partner for further innovative interior and front end modules like center consoles over the last 10 years. And the White House taking executive action to spur domestic clean energy manufacturing. You love to see this. It says we're on track to triple domestic solar manufacturing capacity by 2024. The current base capacity is 7.5 gigawatts set to increase by an additional 15 gigawatts, meaning a total of 22.5 gigawatts by the end of Biden's first term. Enough to enable more than 3.3 million homes to switch to clean solar energy each year. And they've authorized the Defense Production Act to accelerate domestic production of clean energy tech, including solar panel parts, and they've created a 24 month bridge as domestic manufacturing rapidly scales up to ensure the reliable supply of components. This essentially
essentially means they are waiving a tariff. This is actually a big deal as there's an ongoing investigation into solar panels that may have been circumventing these tariffs. Instead of coming from China, they've been coming through four other countries. And that investigation could have led to retroactive tariffs of up to 250%. And those four other countries, Cambodia, Malaysia, Thailand, and Vietnam. And this investigation halted the flow of solar panels that make up more than half of the United States supplies and 80% of imports. So now during the two year tariff suspension window, the US solar industry can return to rapid deployment while the Defense Production Act helps grow American solar manufacturing. So good to see this because there's been a ton of pushback against this investigation. Initiation of this investigation is already causing massive disruption in the solar industry and it will severely harm American solar businesses and workers and increase costs for American families as long as it continues. So hopefully the White House invoking the DPA for the solar industry will come as a major reprieve for the foreseeable future. Apparently a new F-150 Lightning user bought his or her vehicle and it came with a Tesla adapter so that the Ford could help charge a Tesla in need. I don't know if they're trying to troll Tesla here or if they're doing this with all vehicles. It's just one anecdote, but the user did actually share some pictures that came with his new truck. If you missed it, Monroe's doing a teardown series of the R1T on YouTube, definitely worth watching, but Monroe said that the R1T is way underpriced and should cost over $100,000. And no surprise here, but Sandy also talked about buckets of cost reduction opportunity for Rivian and the R1T. Solid Power has started its pilot line for its solid state batteries, and it's expecting to begin shipping batteries to its automotive partners, BMW and Ford, for testing in prototype vehicles by the end of this year, the company said it would then hand off its design to an existing battery manufacturer for mass production. In case you're new, no, solid state batteries are not going to render the lithium market obsolete anytime soon. However, any batteries we can create that can reduce some of the supply constraints with the lithium industry would be a great thing. And last up for today, some people are getting excited that the Elon and Twitter deal might not happen. We got this new filing and the summary is this. Elon believes the company Twitter is actively resisting and thwarting his information rights under the merger agreement. This is a clear material breach of Twitter's obligations and Elon reserves all rights, including his right not to consummate the transaction and his right to terminate the merger agreement. So is this a negotiating tactic? Probably, but either way, this is not a done deal. That'll do it for today. Please take a second to like the video if you did. Hope you guys have a wonderful day and a huge thank you to all of my Patreon supporters.